Welcome, man. Welcome back to the channel. What's going on, everybody? Y'all saw the title. Y'all saw the freaking headline. That's right. GM is at it again. Yes. Uh, technically, this is not nothing um uh, new. Okay, this has been out for a minute, but <laughs> a couple of things have been implemented. Okay. Uh, what I'm talking about is the recall, the L87 recall, the GMs. Uh, they having a problem with their 6.2 uh, liter engine, okay, the big V8 engine that they use in a lot of their, uh, I don't know, Yukons, a lot of their big SUV engines, all right? That engine has exhibited some problems, some major problems, all right, in, in the tune of uh, knocking noise. Now, some car makers having problems a lot of car makers having problems with their engine, some having ticking problems, but not too many out there having knocking problems. Okay. A tick, <laughs> I say this all the time and I get criticized for this, but a tick is not something uh technically unsafe. I mean, it's um unflattering. Okay, you don't want to be riding around with your car and it's ticking, uh, you know, your friends hear it. Yeah, that's not that's not a, that's a bad look, but I much rather would have a ticking issue than a knocking issue. When you got a knocking issue, you looking at bottom end engine repair. Okay. From that standpoint, because of the way the automotive repair industry is set up now, uh, you're going to need an engine to, to replace it. I don't know too many shops out there uh, repairing <laughs> rod knocks or any kind of knock for that matter. Now we're talking about the GM uh, L87 recall. Okay couple of things guys uh they've been halted or those recalls has been i don't know put on hold there's a couple of tools that's extremely important to complete this recall now i think last week we spoke about uh the fact that they the recall pretty much consists of inspecting the engine listening to the engine for any kind of noise if there is no noise they want to change your oil to a different weight of oil i can't remember the weight of the oil but they wanted to experiment with the oil all right from that point if there's still no engine noise you're free to go okay if i own one of these vehicles no i technically would want a engine because the thing about recalls guys when uh dealers are obligated to check it all right think about this if they don't find any problem with the engine at the time of checking uh, yes, they will mark that off, mark your VIN off of their list. As in been done, there was no problem. But you could exhibit that same problem uh, a month from now, all right? But you can't go back to the dealer and say, my engine knocking, can y'all fix my engine? Technically, when they checked it out, uh, it, was, it checked out good, okay? So, but... Couple of things they need uh dealers gonna need to get this recall done. I was reading up on this. Um, first of all, General Motors recalling about six hundred thousand full size pickup and SUVs in the United States. Uh, with the naturally aspirated six point two V eight L eighty seven gasoline engine. The recall covers unit produced between twenty twenty one. I heard even that's debatable through 2024 model years okay now here's the deal the first of uh there's there's a special tool a couple of tools all right let, let me read this addresses a potential engine defect involving the crankshaft and or connecting rod that could lead to engine failure and a loss of propulsion mm. in some cases the engine will need replacement and to that end gm dealers have been instructed to use two special tools to diagnose faulty engine. I'm sure one of those tools uh, should be your God-given tool that you have attached to your body. Yeah, it's called an ear. <laughs> yeah, one tool should be an ear. If you hear the damn thing knocking, there's nothing more else to do but jot this VIN down for engine replacement, all right? But here's what they calling the two tools, all right? The first of these two specialty tools is the GM Pico scope. You guys know what a Pico scope is. Uh, we use that in a diagnostic uh, from time to time. I'm not fluent on it. I'm not. Yeah, I'm old school. Okay. But uh, per GM documents, dealers originally received this essential tool in 2015. I think all of them have it. 
A picoscope is essentially a digital diagnostic tool used to pinpoint issues in a vehicle, electrical, or engine system. The picoscope connects to a computer and captures live data signals from various sensors to help track down issues. Why do you need a scope to track down a noise that you can hear? <laughs> in order to comply with the uh, official service procedure. The other special tools, remember I said there's two, uh, require is a harness, GM60539, which works with the GM Pico scope to diagnose issues related to the L87 recall. GM sent this harness out to dealers in May of 2025. So technically, all dealerships should have the harness. However, I can foresee problems. I can foresee, <laughs> yes, guys. I don't know if you you guys heard an engine uh, with this type noise. In fact, I got a a clip. I want y'all to hear this engine in action with this noise. All right, let's take a listen. Oh, y'all hear that? Damn. If you're in the market for a newer used SUV, I would not recommend the newer GM Yukons or Tahoes. Oh. Bad. This one's got 109,000 miles. It's a 2021. We bought it with 70,000 on it. One owner, clean title, clean Carfax. The transmission went out before 10,000 miles. Damn. We bought an extended warranty through the bank. We caught hell trying to get the transmission done. Now they gave us a $3,500 budget to find a motor. Damn. Y'all find me a motor I can buy for $3,500 for a 2021 Yukon Denali 6.2 liter. <laughs> Absolutely like ridiculous. A, what a joke. Uh, tripping. Damn. See, now, I don't care what nobody say. This guy's entitled to an engine, guys. Pico scope my... Boop, I almost cuss. Get this man an engine. Now... To, to the car maker's credit, he bought this car used. He said it was a Carfax clean, but that's what I mean by this problem could not be present at the time of being checked out. All right. He bought it at 70,000. He now got 100. Technically, he driven this car 30,000 miles. Anything can happen in between then. There are some oil change intervals that should have been done between then. Did he add the correct weight of oil during his oil change? That's a lot coming to play as far as. Uh, this guy getting this done for free. All right. Remember, a recall is lifetime the first time. All right. Will he be able to the original owner? Will he be able to pull this off because he's a new owner? I didn't hear this. I want to hear this again, man. Y'all take a real good listen uh, to this freaking car. This is, this is, again, it's not a tick. Damn. If you're in the market for a newer used SUV, Ooh. I would not recommend the newer GM Yukons or Tahoe's. Oh. Oh. This one's got 109,000 miles. It's a 2021. We bought it with 70,000 on it. One owner, clean title, clean Carfax. The transmission went out before 10,000 miles. Damn. We bought an extended warranty through the bank. We caught hell trying to get the transmission done. Now they gave us a $3,500 budget to find a motor. Y'all find me a motor I can buy for $3,500 for a 2021 Yukon Denali 6.2 liter. Woo. Absolutely ridiculous. What a joke. Yeah, make them little ticking issues y'all be complaining about. Uh, <laughs> yeah. that. <laughs> okay, this is crazy. Uh, that poor guy, I feel bad for him. Uh, however, uh, I don't know. I just feel bad for him. Uh, guys, we went over the uh, issues with the, the recall. I want to read some of these, uh, at least a couple of them. Was there any comments right here? Something is seriously wrong if you lose the Pico scope and worse wrong uh, if you think you could continue to operate even independently without one for a long term, 
Uh, I would happily pay to have the oil change to zero W40. I think that's the uh, weight of oil they're going to then risk doing any more damage. And when they find their Pico scope, so there are some dealers out there that can't find a Pico scope. That's why these guys not getting their recall done. Uh, as few electronics as possible, no variable valves. Uh, they will last 10 years like they should. Then out of a good four speed automatic train, this guy just had, he said he had his transmission done as well. So this transmission as well as this engine uh, fail. The 6.2 is basically a small block, just not the old 5.7, et cetera, small block. I do agree that more complicated and less quality control is a very bad combination. I would certainly be disappointed if, if 10 years was a max. My spare vehicle is 25 years old with 265,000 miles. I was just saying GM hasn't really built a great quality vehicle in almost two decades. Damn. What's up, Uncle Andy? 69 Dark Man. I'm going to get to the comment section in a minute. I just want to uh, generate some of these comments. Damn. Oh, God. All right. The 6.2 comes with a 10 speed. All right. 10 speed. I didn't know that. So this guy transmission as well as his engine uh, croaked. <sighs> Poor guy. You talk about bad luck. Bad luck. That thing sounds like. All right, this is my last time playing it. I got to hear it. One You're in the market for a newer used SUV. I would not recommend the newer GM Yukons or Tahoe's. Okay. This one's got 109,000 miles. It's a 2021. We bought it with 70,000 on it. One owner, clean title, clean Carfax. The transmission went out before 10,000 miles. We bought an extended warranty through the bank. We caught hell trying to get the transmission done. Now they gave us a $3,500 budget to find a motor. Y'all find me a motor I can buy for $3,500 for a 2021 Yukon Denali 6.2 right. liter. All right. Let me hear Absolutely time. ridiculous. What Here a joke. Listen to this, y'all. All right, enough of this foolishness. Uh, I feel bad for these people. Uh, I hope they get whatever they're seeking because this this making GM look pretty bad. They might not ever sell a SUV uh, for a long time. All right, I don't know, man. Garage Monkey, what's up, man? Literally just put one in. Really? Literally just put one in today. It fails so bad the crank actually cracked. Damn. What's up, Jason Garage? Uh, Shoney, what's going on? Mopar Mechanic. What are we talking about? Uh, Shoney and you uploaded the time. I can't find that video, Shoney. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Raymond Grant. Sounds like the intro. <laughs> nah, bro. Intrepid didn't have no sounds like that. The cores for these are like nine grand. They, so they really want them back. What are they going to do with them? Recondition them and put them back out there. Those engines have a stop sale recall. Uh-oh. That don't sound good. Uh, the General Motors president, Mark, is nowhere to be found. And so see him about this Rico. <laughs> oh, what's up, Jacob? That's my dude, Jacob, over there on Facebook. Uh, uh, I would go into hiding myself if it started getting this bad. Knocking like the police. <laughs> hey, buddy, uh, that's a lifter or just engine problem. That sounds like bottom end, guy. Uh, yeah, lifters, you might get some similar to a ticking noise, but that's a knock, which generally, uh, the result of rod knock, rod coming from the rod or something. That's more than a lifter. Yeah, that's a rod, bro. Jeremy, good, good point. If I ever hear this, I am putting Marvel Mystery in just to see what happened. There you go. I heard some of that stuff can do wonders for a lifter would tick, a bent rod would knock. I agree. Uh, you seriously, yeah, I agree with that uh, analogy. A great, they got the warranty, but take it to a shop and have it looked at before buying. Okay, Bob. Oh, interesting. Uh, interesting. Uh, oh yeah, I read that wrong. Yeah, it's a rod. Yeah, sound like a rod. Not about what? What are we talking about? Where will anyone find that engine 
He did. That's what he said. That's what he was alluding to. Where are he going to find a $3,500 engine? But that's the budget they gave him. I think his budget is low because he already used, just like homeowners insurance. If you get your roof done one month and you have a water leak in your house, they're not going to give you the full amount for the water leak. They just paid for you a roof. <laughs> now, this guy, they just paid for him a transmission. He already won the engine again? Okay. Yeah, this could get a little. Okay. Yeah, Uncle Andy, what's up, man? 6.2 comes with a 10-speed. We use the A-speed ZF transmission, all right? They holding up fairly well, although we have replaced a couple, okay? Not all of them. Not all of them have this problem, I guess, and now you should. I watched the teardown of a 6.2 main bearings were completely smoked. Damn. Woo, I posted one today that was completely smoked. Garage Monkey, I'm going to have to go check that out, man. It's on your channel or something? I'm going to have to go check that out. <laughs> I know, right? King Solomon. Uh, my charger runs 520, and when it's hot, the idle was 13 pounds before I changed it. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that's what that car calls for, that year model, uh, 520. Yeah, people hear that ticking and thinking it's no big deal. Oh, yeah. You hear a rod knock, it's definitely a big deal. That ticking turns into a knock real quick. All right. That was definitely bottom end. I agree, and uh, you should upload Shoney, I can't find that video. Guys, that's all I have, man. If you got one, more uh, I hope good. I, I hope it worked out for you, okay? Everybody that own one, it's not the end of the world, all right? You probably should have got a Ram, okay, 1500 with a Hemi in it. Those Hemi's are not exhibiting rod now. It takes 0 20. Okay, I think they experimented with the oil, Jeremy. They want you to go to 0 W40, but... At any rate, guys, that's all I have, man. I got to get out of here. Uh, wish y'all the best of luck on if you own one, like I say. And uh, that's that. Thanks for tuning in. I got to go.